morning. morning. And welcome to worship this morning. This morning we use the order of service as found printed in our worship folder. We join in our opening hymn, hymn number 727. May the Lord bless our worship together this morning. This morning we celebrate Saints Triumphant Sunday, a Sunday that reminds us that God keeps all of his promises, including the promise to one day bring us to be forever with the Lord. We continue with our order of service as found printed in our worship folder. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful, and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil, and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. 
that I am truly sorry for my sins. And trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for all of our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Let us pray. Almighty God and Savior, you have set the final day and hour when we shall be delivered from this world of sin and death. Keep us ever watchful for the coming of your Son, that we may sit with him and all your holy ones at the marriage feast in heaven. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. Our first lesson is recorded in Isaiah chapter 52, verses 1 through 6. This lesson reminds us that no matter how bleak things may get in this life, our Lord promises that one day he will come. He will be the one that will come from the sky saying, here I am. To remind us that there is a world that is coming where there will be no more sorrow or tears or mourning or pain for the old order of things has passed away just as God has remembered his people in the past so also he will remember us when he comes to take us to be forever with him in heaven we hear from Isaiah chapter 52 wake awake clothe yourself with strength O Zion Put on your beautiful garments, Jerusalem, you holy city. For never again will the uncircumcised and the unclean enter you. Shake off the dust. Get up and take your seat, Jerusalem. Loosen the chains from your neck, you captive daughter of Zion. Yes, this is what the Lord says. You were sold for nothing, and you will be redeemed without money. Yes, this is what the Lord God says. In the beginning, my people went down to Egypt to stay there for a while. Later, Assyria oppressed them without cause. Now what do I have here, declares the Lord. Indeed, my people have been taken away for nothing. Their rulers howl with mockery, declares the Lord. My name is continually despised all day. Therefore, my people will know my name. So on that day, they will know that I am the one, the one who is saying, here I am. This is God's word. We join together responsibly in our psalm of the day, psalm number 84. How lovely is your dwelling place. My soul yearns, even faints. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. Better is one day in your courts. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God. O Lord Almighty, blessed are they who trust in you. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Our second lesson is recorded in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. The Apostle Paul, in his letter to the church at Rome, reminds that the wages of sin is death. But in the letter that he writes to the church in Thessalonica, he reminds God's believers that through faith in Jesus, that earthly result leads to eternal gain. Death has been changed to a sleep that we will awake from on the last day. We hear from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who have fallen asleep, so that you do not grieve in the same way as the others who have no hope. 
Indeed, if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, then in the same way, we also believe that God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep through Jesus. In fact, we tell you this by the word of the Lord. We who are alive and left until the coming of the Lord will certainly not go on ahead of those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so, we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. This is God's word. We hear now our verse of the day. Alleluia. They are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. Alleluia. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel lesson is recorded in Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 through 13. As Jesus continues in a series of parables that provide this picture of the kingdom of God, of what that last day will one day look like, he issues an, a warning and an encouragement to believers to always be ready because we do not know the day or hour when that last day will come. For those who are unprepared, what a day of mourning it will be. But for those who are prepared, who put their hope and trust in their Savior Jesus, what a glorious day it will be. So let us be prepared for whenever that day may come. We hear from Matthew chapter 25. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. When the foolish ones took their lamps, they did not take any oil with them. But the wise took oil in their containers with their lamps. While the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. But at midnight there was a shout. Look, the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish one said to the wise, Give us some of your oil because our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, No, there may not be enough for us and for you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were away buying oil, the bridegroom came. Those who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet and the door was shut. Later the other virgins also came and said, Lord, Lord, let us in. But he answered, Amen, I tell you, I do not know you. Therefore keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise At this time we join in confessing our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. Maker of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the You may be seated as we join in singing our next hymn, hymn number 206.
death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, now and always. Amen. The word of God I am privileged to share with you this morning comes from Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 through 18. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He called to him, Abraham. Abraham answered, I am here. God said, Now take your son, your only son whom you love, Isaac, and go to the land of Moriah. Offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains there, the one to which I direct you. Abraham got up early in the morning saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him, along with Isaac his son. Abraham split the wood for the burnt offering. Then he set out to go to the place that God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go on over there. We will worship, and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and loaded it on Isaac, his son. He took the fire pot and the knife in his hand. The two of them went on together. Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, My father. He said, I am here, my son. He said, Here are the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So the two of them went on together. They came to the place that God had told him about. Abraham built the altar there. He arranged the wood, tied up Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slaughter his son. The angel of the Lord called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Abraham said, I am here. He said, do not lay your hand on the boy. Do not do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, because you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. Abraham looked around and saw that behind him there was a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. Abraham called the name of that place, The Lord Will Provide. So it is said to this day, On the mountain of the Lord it will be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, I have sworn by myself, declares the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will bless you greatly, and I will multiply your descendants greatly, like the stars of the sky and like the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the city gates of their enemies. In your seed, all the nations of the earth will be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. This is God's word. I want you to take a moment and imagine that you were Abraham. Close your eyes and picture his anguish. He is happily married to his beautiful bride. But years and years go by and still no children. This was their heart's desire to raise a family together. Imagine all the praying, all the pleading. Remember, this is the man who wrestled with God in prayer over a sinful city. How much did he wrestle with God in the early years of his marriage over a child? Imagine Abraham, whose name means exalted father, 
holding your childless, tear-stained wife as she cries out, what is wrong with me? You shed tears with her as you see a ticking clock ready to strike midnight. Picture his anguish. Then I want you to picture his joy. As God comes to you and says, your prayers, your heart's desire, yes, you exalted father will have a child. In fact, you will have many children, so many descendants that you won't be able to count them all. It would be as fruitless of an endeavor as trying to count all the sand on a seashore or all the stars on a starry lit sky. I want you to imagine Abraham running and telling Sarah this and the look on her face that you've never been able to see before as you tell her that she will be a mom, that this is God's promise to you. And then picture them waiting, waiting on God's timing, waiting on God's promise. One year might have been nerve-wracking, but probably didn't shake their resolve. Now two years, three, five, ten. God comes and reaffirms his promise and tells them to trust in his promises, to trust in his timing. But then 15 years go by, 20 you realize that the clock has struck midnight. There's no earthly way that you can have a child. 24 years pass. But the Lord comes to you and tells you that in one year's time, you will have a son. You laugh in joy. Sarah, understanding the clock, laughs in doubt. But in one year's time, you laugh together, staring at this newborn child that you call laughter. That's what the name Isaac means. Yes, picture Abraham's anguish. Picture his joy. But now picture his confusion. Genesis chapter 22 the verses that we just read. Can you imagine? Can you imagine being Abraham? What was Abraham's first thought when he heard this from God? The very first thing that entered his mind when God told him to take his only son and go up, up to a mountain and offer him as a whole burnt offering to him. What would have been your first thought if you were Abraham? Can you even comprehend it? Can you wrap your mind around God's test of Abraham? A whole burnt offering symbolized complete commitment to God. God asked Abraham, do you love me more than your son? Show me. If you struggle to wrap your mind around it, so did Abraham. He couldn't bring himself to tell Isaac. Scripture doesn't tell us if he told Sarah, but me personally, I, I, I doubt it. How could you have that conversation? Think about how long Abraham had to think about this. The first night, did he sleep at all? The trip up to the mountain took days, a lot of time to think. And Isaac's obvious question, 
I, I see everything we need for a sacrifice, but I don't see the sacrifice. How much did that question cut Abraham? Could you imagine walking and stopping dead in your tracks when you hear this question from your son? And yet Abraham, Abraham's faith, he so clung to the promise that the book of Hebrews says that even as Abraham raised the knife, he trusted in the promise that God could even raise Isaac from the dead. This was his son, the son that God had promised, the son that no matter what, God would keep safe. It's hard to imagine being Abraham, but it's hard to imagine being God here, isn't it? How could you ask such a thing? That's the obvious question from this lesson, isn't it? How could you ask such a thing? Why did God ask for such a test? How do you not get mad at God here, right? Why would you put Abraham through this? Why would you put Isaac through this? How could you ask someone to sacrifice their only son? Who could carry out such a thing? Who could do such a thing? His son, his only son, who he loved, to be offered as a sacrifice to show complete commitment. You see the lesson here, don't you? Who could do such a thing? God did. With his son, his only son who he loved, offered as a sacrifice to show complete commitment. This is what God did for Abraham and for you and me. A substitute was found for Isaac, a ram in the thicket. A substitute was found for you and me as well. God's only son offered on a cross to show God's complete commitment to you. The boundless love of God showed in the most unimaginable, incomprehensible way, in the strongest of terms beyond what we could even think about doing ourselves. God has shown his love for you and me. And the results of that love. Jesus' sacrifice on the cross showed complete commitment from God and the complete removal of sins from us. When we struggle with God's timing, when we waver at God's promises, this is the story that you need to come back to and remember. To look and see the complete commitment that God has for you. His love for you. His forgiveness for you. And to trust like Abraham in your father's loving promises. But this leaves one last question for us. And an important one for today. What does this have to do with Saints Triumphant Sunday? This week we celebrated Veterans Day. It was pretty neat to see all the pictures that were posted on, on Facebook of people giving thanks for their family member or friend who risked their life for serving this country. Their, their sacrifice, their time away from family and loved ones, risking their lives. Veterans Day reminds, reminds us of their sacrifice. But Veterans Day also reminds us that we triumph because of their sacrifice. I especially appreciated the pictures that people posted of family members who have passed away who have served in the military. I remember seeing the picture of Amanda's grandfather who has passed away in the past few years and served in World War II. That picture is a reminder that we stand on their shoulders and continue to enjoy 
the triumph of freedom. Saints Triumphant Sunday is the reminder that we triumph through sacrifice, through his sacrifice. We remember those who sing the song of triumph in heaven today as a result of his sacrifice. They are enjoying the everlasting triumph of freedom and eternal glory. We remember our family members, our loved ones, those who are now singing that song of triumph for the first time this year. We rejoice at Christian funerals in the past year where we look at a casket in front of us and say, he is not here, he is risen. We rejoice in their triumph because of Jesus' sacrifice for us. We rejoice in the truth that has set us free. We also remember our family members and loved ones who have been singing the song of triumph for years, who now know the endless joy, enjoy the endless praise and glory that knows no end who long to remind us to never forget his sacrifice that has won for us freedom from sin, guilt, and punishment, who has won for us the life our loved ones who have gone before us long to share with us. Trust in God's promises. Have unwavering confidence in his timing and rejoice in the triumph won for us through his sacrifice, looking forward to the day that we join our loved ones in the everlasting song of triumph, forever with the Lord. Amen. Please stand. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard and keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen. At this time, we bow our heads in prayer. Lord of eternity and King of saints, all the heavens adore you. Saints and angels sing before you. We too join them to praise your majesty. You clothe us with garments of splendor. You bless us with grace and mercy in this life and eternal glory forever. What undeserved love that you show us. We thank you, Lord, that you have made us your saints. Encourage us by your gracious promises. Forgive our failures to live as you desire. Strengthen the faith of all who are weak and wandering. Give us power to live as your faithful people. Your saints will triumph forever in new heavens and a new earth. The sound of weeping and crying will be heard no more. We anticipate with joy an eternity of perfect fellowship with you. Be with us as we work and witness for Christ so that many more people can join us before your throne. And hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. Lord of life, the day is coming when you will come down from heaven with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet call of God. On that glorious day, the saints triumphant will rise in bright array, clothed in your perfect righteousness. Give us strength until that day when we will share fully in the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ, who also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. You may be seated as we join in singing our next hymn, hymn number 213. Please stand for closing prayer and blessing. Almighty God, give to your church the Holy Spirit and the wisdom that comes from above. Let nothing hinder your word from being freely proclaimed to the joy and edifying of Christ's holy people, so that we may serve you in steadfast faith and confess your name as long as we live. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. You may be seated as we join in singing our closing hymn, hymn number 219.
and good morning to you all once again. Just a couple of uh, announcements here for you this morning. Uh, obviously, with uh, in light of current climate, some of our uh, outreach plans, Christmas plans, have been uh, have moved to Plan B, uh, and some of those plans have been finalized as we. Uh, look for ways of reaching out also into a Richland Center, but also to our surrounding community and communities here. Uh, we are not going to be able to do our live nativity the way that we have in years past, but we have uh, put together a, uh, an outreach uh, event that is uh, COVID safe, uh, that is going to be a drive-through event. You have a flyer in your worship folder that gives a little bit of information about the date and end time of when that is taking place. Uh, and. Uh, I think that is, uh, people are looking for something right now with so many things being canceled and so many things not being available. Uh, there is a, a thirst for connection, uh, and especially at Christmas as people are being limited in their ability to gather with families or do other normal things, uh, there's a need for this. And I think we're gonna be uh, surprised in a, in a good way, blessed uh, by this opportunity to reach out with what matters at Christmas and our connection to our Savior. So again, information is listed in your worship folder for that. Uh, last year we did Christmas baskets for uh, different businesses uh, in our communities. Uh, we are shifting that focus this year to be doing Christmas baskets for our missing members, for those who maybe we haven't seen in a while as a way of, of reaching out during this time of, of offering that connection uh, to others to point them to uh, their uh, connection in Christ uh, and ability to uh, rejoice this Christmas. Uh, if you are interested in assisting with that, there will be uh, time that will be coming up. It'll be listed in the worship folder for assembling those Christmas baskets, uh, or if you would like to uh, make a, uh, uh, a free will offering uh, to those efforts, a basket has been placed in the back of church uh, for anyone that would like to do so that will be there during the month of November. Uh, the only other thing to announce is just the uh, joint council meeting that will be taking place this Tuesday uh, be held at Trinity at 7 p.m. With that, that is the last of, of my announcements. So God's richest blessings on your day and week, and I will look forward to greeting you on the way out. Mm -hmm.